There are some projects that have sat in the top 100 on CoinMarketCap for years, and yet most people know very little about them. However, what if I was to tell you that there's a project flying under the radar which is competing with hot projects like Polkadot, Cosmos, and Kava? I bet you'd be pretty interested in learning more about it, right? My name is Guy, and in this video, I'm going to do my best to dispel some of the myths surrounding waves. I'll explain how it's creating a network of blockchains and playing its part to usher in a new age of interchain DeFi. Finally, I'll go over its tokenomics and tell you why the recent partnership with Band Protocol is such a big deal. Before I get going, there are a few quick things I need to say. Don't let the accent fool you, I am no financial advisor. Sorry folks. That means that this video is for educational purposes only. Be sure to consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Also, if you've stumbled onto the channel for the first time, then welcome to the Bureau. My mission is to provide you good people with amazing crypto education day in and day out. If you want to tap into that fountain of knowledge, then obliterate that subscribe button and flick on those notifications. That way, you'll be plugged into the YouTube matrix and ensure you're the first to know whenever I release another video. Okay, enough pitter-patter, let's surf into the waves. Now, for those of you who are new to waves, we need a bit of an overview. If you know all about it, then feel free to jump ahead to the rest of my analysis using the timestamps that I've provided right down here. So, what is Waves? Well, it's a blockchain launched in 2016. And initially, those chaps at Waves focused on building generic technologies, a bit like Ethereum. Here's the deal though. Most people misunderstand Waves and believe that it's a platform for tokenization or token issuance. Now, that might have been somewhat true during the ICO mania of 2017. Of course, Ethereum was the biggest platform for fundraising, but Waves was actually the second biggest fundraising platform during those crazy times. Yes, a lot of money was being raised on Waves in those gunslinging days. However, that should not detract from the fact that Waves has always been a generic chain, which has been focused on becoming many chains. Then there was the whole thing with smart contracts becoming a big deal and the dream of automating out those pesky middlemen. Waves wanted to create their own version of smart contracts and didn't want to copy anyone else. That resulted in the building of RIDE. This is the first non-Turing complete smart contract language. I'm going to save you the technical mumbo jumbo here, but this basically allows you to do everything you can do with an Ethereum smart contract, but without gas. Now, that's a massive deal when you consider that Ethereum gas fees are getting quite absurd right now. When it comes to the Waves ecosystem, it actually covers a wide range of sectors including trading platforms, marketplaces, liquidity relays, data providers, games, and a whole lot more. Yes, its ecosystem is not as big as Ethereum's. However, the point here is that it spans a wide range of different sectors. You even have STO platforms like Tokenomica, which are built on the Waves blockchain. Now, I do need to mention that there are a few things that Waves has that make it stand out from the crowd. The first is that you can actually vote on changes to the monetary policy on Waves. This was actually one of the first examples of controlling the supply of money by a community via decentralized voting. That community voting mechanism was created to enable the creation of a whole new range of financial instruments on Waves. A great example of that is Neutrino, which ushered in the creation of the USDN stablecoin that pays holders interest rates of 8% to 15%. This algorithmic stablecoin is collateralized by Waves coins. So, how does this work? Well, as the value of Waves rises, a special reserve fund is formed to maintain the one-to-one -one peg in the event that Waves tokens falls in price. If that reserve fund is not large enough to cover the fall in the Waves price, the smart contract issues special tokens. These are called Neutrino system base tokens, which can then be traded at any price with USDN. These are then liquidated at a ratio of 1 to 1. What all that means is that it's possible to do USD stablecoin investments and get paid interest denominated in fiat. 
Finally, enterprise solutions are another very interesting part of the Waves ecosystem. There are already quite a few projects built on this Waves enterprise chain. You could call it a fork of Waves, but the key thing to understand is that it's an entirely separate blockchain focused on enterprise usage. Several applications focused on things like cash pooling, logistics, and many other things have already been deployed on it. With all that being said, I now want to take a deeper look at the Waves Enterprise solution. Waves Enterprise was born out of the realization that an ever increasing number of businesses want their own blockchains. Indeed, all evidence seems to indicate that most businesses adopting them are not ready to use open permissionless blockchains and have a strong preference for private permissioned ones. That's why Waves created a hybrid blockchain platform for Waves Enterprise that allows businesses to choose if they want a private and public blockchain. Another cool thing is that Waves have built the functionality for businesses to create a list of people who can interact with private data. Pretty damn important for data privacy. Anyhow, the point here is that there's a wide degree of customization available for businesses wanting their own unique blockchain, and the Waves SDK has the tools to make that happen. However, this trend of businesses wanting their own blockchains creates a situation where you have a lot of different chains that in certain situations have to interact with each other. All that means that there is a very real need to make these enterprise blockchains modular and to work out of the box. Otherwise, there's simply too much of a hurdle for businesses to embrace blockchain tech. On top of that, you need to make sure that those chains can interact with each other somehow. That's actually a massive problem that needed to be solved for Waved Enterprise to have a hope in hell of succeeding and actually being adopted. So, how is Waves tackling this enterprise adoption problem? Through a product called Waves Matter. The idea here is to build the ability for businesses to create their own closed or open blockchain out of the box in 15 minutes and to allow the business to select their own consensus algorithm. Another thing to note is that the same code base would be used for both enterprise and open chains. Now, that sounds pretty amazing, but it must be made clear that it's far from unique. There are other projects like Cosmos doing a similar thing with their so-called Internet of Blockchains. That reminds me, if you want to learn more about Cosmos, then be sure to watch my video on that right here. But how is Waves Matter going to be important for the whole ecosystem? Well, if you have a lot of businesses that have launched their blockchains, they need to interact with each other. In other words, they need to be able to interoperate with one another. There are a few projects focusing on that interoperability problem. Cosmos is one of them, and another top interoperability play is Polkadot. I've covered that in quite a lot of detail in the video right here. So yes, Waves is not alone in identifying this issue. But how is Waves going to attack the challenge of connecting different blockchains? Well, by creating a solution that isn't just focused on Waves. First, they need to connect all the chains that are built on Waves Matter. To do that, they would need some form of a hub that allows those chains to exchange information. However, the chaps at Waves understand that they will not be able to move all the projects in the world to Waves products. They basically accept that the future is likely to see many different chains and there won't be a single blockchain that rules them all. Here's the deal though. For all those different blockchains to communicate, they would all need to interact with that magical Waves hub I mentioned earlier. So how have Waves tackled that problem? Well, the next step is to connect open chains such as Ethereum to Waves chains. So you have this hub that connects the Waves open chain, custom chains, enterprise chains, and other open chains like Ethereum. The last component is one that allows you to push critical information and data from the external world to the blockchain one. That's another way of saying an oracle system. So this magical system marries an oracle solution with blockchain relays. This will be blockchain agnostic and have its own economy based on existing tokens. This complete solution is known as the gravity hub. This essentially marries the idea of sidechains with oracles and facilitates the transfer of information between sidechains. Basically, the Gravity Hub can be seen as the linchpin in the Waves ecosystem and is what makes Waves an interoperability play. What's pretty interesting about this is that it could open up a range of new opportunities for conducting business on the blockchain. That's all made possible by Waves not wanting to limit this to their own ecosystem, 
but to make the solution usable for any blockchain. Honestly, folks, I think that's the natural development of an ecosystem of blockchains as a whole. Sure, there are probably some people that think that there will be a single winner in this game of blockchains. However, I disagree with that notion and point out that enterprises have made it pretty damn clear that they generally want their own chains. Even when it comes to those projects that are building blockchains for public use, there are benefits from being in control of its parameters. Take the Binance DEX, for example. They picked the Cosmos SDK to build on specifically because CZ wanted his own blockchain and the level of control that comes with this. That's a pretty clear signal if you ask me. With all that said, I now want to move on to take a look at some of the other uses of the Gravity Hub. Alrighty, so one of the things I'm most excited about right now is interchain DeFi. The reason why is that DeFi has captured billions of dollars in valuation, with most apps being built on Ethereum. Think about the current DeFi landscape. Pretty much every DeFi project that you can think of only accepts ETH or ERC20 tokens. That's pretty limiting and ties the future of the vast majority of DeFi projects to the growth of the Ethereum ecosystem. What the Gravity Hub means is that DeFi projects wouldn't need to rely on that one ecosystem, and that DeFi projects using it could extend support to assets outside of Ethereum. Imagine how happy people would be if all that DeFi goodness could be brought over to Bitcoin, for example. With Waves, that interoperability provided by the Gravity Hub can be combined with the Neutrino protocol. This basically enables the creation of stablecoins pegged to the price of real-world assets like currency or commodities. Yes, USDN is the first synthetic asset created using Neutrino. However, you could have synthetic tokens for nearly anything. Think about things like tokens pegged to the price of an ounce of gold. So, practically, it works much like how Synthetics tokenizes synthetic assets on the Ethereum blockchain. The really interesting thing is that these new assets could be transferred to any blockchain connected with the Gravity Hub and thus move between different blockchains. Now, I think that could be pretty damn useful for cross-chain DeFi. What this does is help solve the issue of value fragmentation that we see so often in the crypto space today. Think about all the different blockchains out there that have their own languages, logic and rules. That all means that it's difficult for these different value islands to interact or transact value between each other. That leads to value fragmentation and means that in order to exchange value between different ecosystems, you need to use an exchange. The big problem with that is that these exchanges can be fragile, hacked or even shut down by governments. So it's probably not the best idea to have exchanges being the only way to transfer value from one crypto ecosystem to another. Also, Think of the value that could be created by interchain DeFi. We have honestly just scratched the surface with Ethereum. Now, after saying all that, there is one key element that any DeFi platform needs, and that is dependable pricing data. I'm sure many of you know that this is typically done using Oracle solutions, and that's why I want to quickly talk about the Waves and Band Protocol partnership. In July of this year, a partnership was announced to integrate BAND Protocol's decentralized and customizable oracles. This would enable ecosystem players on Waves to use the Oracle solution to connect to any external data source or API in a permissionless way. Basically, this piece of the puzzle makes Waves a veritable one-stop shop capable of supporting the back-end of any Web 3.0 dApp. This synergizes strongly with Ride, which means that no gas fees are required within those dApps. If you've used an Ethereum dApp recently, you'll understand what a big deal this is. Honestly, folks, I think this could be a pretty big deal. And if you want to learn more about BAM Protocol, then make sure you watch my deep dive right here. It's now time to move on to another very important topic for Waves. And this is the least flattering of them all. I'm talking about the economics of Wave tokens. The first thing to note here is that there is no capped supply for the token and that inflation is determined by community-driven monetary policy. This means that wave holders are able to change the rewards distributed by every block via a vote. There is one massive problem with this. Because waves is a staking coin, many holders want to receive higher rewards, which means many people might just want to increase block rewards at every opportunity and cause Venezuela 2.0 levels of hyperinflation. So, 
Are Waves holders destined for a future where they'll need trillions of tokens just to buy themselves one Dogecoin? Well, the truth is that the Waves community still do not have absolute control of the protocol. There are basic controls. The community can only increase block rewards by 0.5 Waves at a time, every 100,000 blocks. These block rewards started at 6 Waves, and that means that Waves can never truly become hyperinflationary. This essentially means that the maximum rate of Waves inflation is about 8.5% a year, but it's something to be aware of. When it comes to governance of that monetary policy system, only people that run a node have a vote on monetary policy. If you would prefer not to do that, then the only option to have a say in that inflation rate is to lease your waves to a node that supports your view. Right now, the waves staking reward sits at just over 5.5%. However, only about 55% of the wave circulating supply is being staked. That means about 45% of waves holders are being crushed by that inflation. Inflation has also meant that the wave circulating supply has actually gone over the initial issued supply of 100 million waves. Of course, you do have some deflationary factors at play. When fees are paid on the waves blockchain, they're paid in waves which are then burned. Of course, whether this is meaningful depends on whether it's actually being used. So, how does that look? Well, we take a look at all the waves dApps on the dApp radar. I can see that only three Waves dApps have had any users in the last 24 hours. Neutrino Protocol, with their fewer than 500 users over the last day, is hardly blowing me away here. So, not a lot of transaction fees are being burned over here. Of course, there are other use cases for the token. For example, users will no doubt want to stake Waves in order to blunt the effect of that protocol inflation. However, at the most recent check, only about 45% of token holders have decided to do that. You also have that governance use case which allows you to vote on protocol inflation. However, valuing this is a lot less clear-cut and hard to ascertain. The token does also give you access to exclusive airdrops, games and dApps on the network. However, as we saw with the current dApps on the network, there's not much activity on those dApps. So, Unless you like the idea of being pretty much the only person playing a game, then I don't think access to exclusive games is that good a reason to hold those Waves tokens. Like any cryptocurrency, you could use Waves as money. However, I could create Guycoin and use that as money, so this use case doesn't really mean much. Maybe some other use cases will emerge for the Waves token in the future. But honestly folks, I'm really struggling to see how the token captures fundamental value. Ok team, I've probably rambled on enough for today, and it's time to share my closing thoughts. Honestly, I view Waves as an interesting alternative to Cosmos and Polkadot when it comes to interoperability. Several pretty big projects have taken the leap to connect with Gravity and bridge with the Waves ecosystem. All that does excite me when I think about DeFi and bringing all that goodness to blockchains outside of the Ethereum ecosystem. That interoperability synergizes perfectly with Neutrino, and I really think that the issuance of algorithmically stable synthetic assets could be one of the next big things in DeFi. All that being said, I'd like to see that algorithmic stability tested and see what happens if the price of waves plunges when a new synthetic asset is launched. The key question for me is, will the system of neutrino-based system tokens actually work and keep that synthetic asset stable? When it comes to Waves Enterprise, I do think Waves are on the right track here. Personally, I share their philosophy, and it will be fascinating to see how many businesses they can onboard onto that product in the next few years. But seriously folks, I'm pretty damn impressed with what I could piece together about the tech of Waves, and believe that this interoperability play has the potential to create massive value for the wider crypto ecosystem. However, one of my main concerns is the adoption of Waves apps. Current user numbers are really low. With all that being said, I still think that Polkadot and Cosmos are better interoperability bets. But I shan't rule out Waves from making moves just yet. When it comes to the economics of the Waves token, I do have my reservations. While there may be value from earning staking returns, we cannot forget that these are inflationary. Without a great deal of use for the tokens in the DAP ecosystem, we have no forces to counteract this inflation. This then leaves me wondering about the long-term price potential of the token itself. All in all, I do think that Waves has the potential to create huge amounts of value. However, 
I think that this value won't necessarily be captured by the Waves token itself. And that's it, my friends, my overview of Waves. I've done a lot of talking, so it's now time to hear your thoughts on Waves. Do you think the token is overvalued? Will you be backing it? Use those comments below. And finally, seeing that you stuck around to the end of the video, I assume you got some value from it. Be sure to smash up those likes and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more of me on YouTube.